Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to begin our discussion of minimum spanning trees. To begin with, we're going to remind ourselves of some definitions and ideas in graph theory we may have forgotten. The extra videos that I posted pertain to this stuff, but it is worth going over them here just so everybody is guaranteed to have seen them. First, I want to remind people that graphs are allowed to have weights along the edges of the graph. So in this graph here, we have a graph where each weight has an edge. These exist commonly in practice for things like the cost of connecting two things or something like the distance between nodes. There are many different interpretations of what these weights might mean. So with that in our minds, we are going to, for this unit, color these with these dotted lines because we're going to be drawing over them a lot and it's just a little bit easier to see when we have these dotted lines. And we'll see that as we're going through several examples in the future. So all we really need to talk about here is that we have different edges and we want to talk about what is a spanning tree of this graph. So I'll show the definition first and then show an example. So we say a spanning tree is a tree, that's not very surprising, and it is composed of every single vertex. So in this tree up here, it must have every single vertex in the graph present. So that we must have every single vertex and some of the edges. Notice it needs to be a tree and have all of the vertices. So let's see if we can come up with an example. So an example of a spanning tree here would be, we connect those edges, those vertices, those vertices, those vertices, those vertices, those vertices, and those vertices. If we notice, every single vertex is now in the spanning tree, and we have a subset of the edges that I have selected. I have highlighted them here in red. This may or may not be the minimum spanning tree. We could compute the weight of this. Let's do this on a little cleaner example that I've done down here below. Notice this is a different spanning tree. It is different than the one I did up here. And the weight of this spanning tree can be computed. The weight of, let's call it T, well, we just need to add up the weight of every single edge in the tree. So this would be seven plus eight plus six plus nine plus three plus one plus seven. So this is 15 plus 15, that's 30, plus 11, that's 41. So this is our, our spanning tree's weight. Whether or not it is the minimum or not is not necessarily obvious looking at this uh, tree here. So we'll have to figure out some way of determining whether or not we actually have a minimum. I claim that this tree down here is the minimum weight spanning tree. Let's see how it compares to the one above. If you notice, we no longer have this, these two edges down here. Eight and nine are now gone. But we've added in this weight edge that has a weight of three and this edge that has a weight of two. And other than that, it looks like it's the same. So let's compute the weight of this tree The weight of this tree is 7 plus 2 plus 6 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1 plus 4. This is 9 plus 6, that's 15, plus 5 is 20, plus another 8 is 28. And 28 is in fact less than 41, so this is a better spanning tree, but whether or not it does the minimum remains to be seen. We will prove that our algorithm is correct as we are merging forward, but for now we're just going to say this is better and you could try to play around and it turns out you cannot do better than this for this tree. So what is our algorithm going to be? How are we going to do this? So let's look at an example. In this example, I've taken the above tree and I have replaced this edge down here that had a weight of seven with an edge that has a weight of six. That is the only difference. But let's march through it and see what happens here. So the algorithm that we're going to use is going to start at some vertex. Let's say we started at vertex V1. We're then going to select edges to add that are the minimum from the light blue edges that I have here to the white edges of the graph. So if I look, the only two edges are this edge seven and this edge eight. So the minimum between those two would be seven. And then we've added V2 to the graph. Let's highlight V2. 
Now, we want to find the minimum weight edge from this blue stuff that we have here to any of the white vertices. So we have a couple of options. We have this edge that had eight, this one that has two, this one that has 11, this one that has six. The minimum between all of those is definitely the one that has a weight of two. So this edge gets selected. And now we need to add V6 to our spanning tree. And now let's find the minimum edge. This eight goes from blue to blue, so we no longer care about that. We have a weight, uh, edge of six, an edge of 11, an edge of nine, and an edge of six. Notice we now have a decision. There are two that match. This is possible. So let us actually color this edge just to be different. And then we've added now V7 to the spanning tree. Now let's look for the next minimum weight edge. We still have this edge with six, this one with 11, this one with nine, but now we've added two new options of a one and a seven. So this edge with one looks like the choice. So we're going to go along there and add that. And now well, we have all the old edges still, six, 11, nine, seven, but now we have an, an edge with three and an edge with five. The smallest between those is the edge with three. So we add V4 to the, the spanning tree. And now we have a couple of options. We have six, 11, nine, five, seven, four, and five. Four is the winner among all of those. So we connect V8 to the spanning tree. And now we just need to see which one is the minimum connecting V3 to the uh, spanning tree. So we have five and six. Five is the smaller of the two. So we add it to the spanning tree. And now we have a spanning tree and I claim that it is the minimum spanning tree. The way that we developed this is what we call a greedy method. Greedy. What that means is that at every instance, we made the best local decision we could. We never had any forethought. We never thought by adding potentially a less cost-effective edge like this, maybe in the future, I could make better decisions that in total would cause my, problem, my algorithm to be more efficient than the one I just talked about. So that with a greedy algorithm, one where you are just making the best decision at the time without any decision about what happens in the future, those are difficult algorithms to study because we need to verify that they are correct. Analyzing the runtime of the algorithms can sometimes be easy, that whether or not this one is easy remains to be seen, but frequently the difficulty with a greedy algorithm is proving its correctness. Now let's look at the code for this algorithm as our last thing, just to see how this looks in code. But before we analyze it, we will look at the, some theorems related to minimum spanning trees. So the code for this, that algorithm is called Prim's Minimum Spanning Tree. So this algorithm is called Prim MST for Prim's Minimum Spanning Tree. It, input, it takes input as a weighted graph and its output is a minimum spanning tree of that graph. What do we do? We begin by setting the white nodes in that example we just talked about. This set U corresponds to the white nodes. And then we're going to add a new variable called the MST parent that corresponds to the parent in the minimum spanning tree. So in this example up here, what I actually did was I kept track of how did I get to each node? So I'd have a pointer pointing back and pointing back and pointing back, 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 and back. So rather than just highlighting the edge, we just had a pointer to the previous node. So we had the uh, tree this way where we only pointed at the parent. You could also point at the children or something like that, but it's not particularly important to do that. Now let us look at what the code does. So we're going to initialize that the parent of that first node, V1 if you look, doesn't point back at anything. So it has no parent, we call that null. Then we say while U is not empty. So while there are white nodes, this line here means that there exists white nodes in the graph. And while I can reach the nodes, what does that, what do I mean by that? That means there must be an edge from the blue nodes to the white nodes. That is what that part highlighted in light blue right now refers to. So let's just annotate this to make sure we understand exactly what's happening in this lavender-ish color. We're going to say that that means white nodes exist.
And then this code I will highlight in orange corresponds to and they are reachable. Notice how we write this mathematically. While it is not the empty set, and while there exists an edge. Whether or not those things are easy to check is remains to be seen, but again, we are analyzing the runtime here. And then we have this very conveniently type set statement that is actually very difficult mathematically. So we say VI, VJ, that is an edge connecting VI to VJ, is the minimum weight edge from G, V minus U to U. So this is the minimum weight edge from the colored nodes before to the white nodes. So this code here corresponds to find the best edge. Best edge. And then once we found the best edge, we assign the correct parentage and add it to the colored nodes. Notice that we add it to the colored nodes by removing it from the white nodes. We don't actually have any data structure storing those nodes. So that is worth mentioning. We won't, will not analyze the runtime of this algorithm, but notice that at every step, we're finding the minimum weight edge from our currently found set, the light blue nodes, to the unfound set, which we left as white nodes in our example when we were working through the algorithm. The runtime and the tr whether or not this algorithm is correct remains to be seen. The next thing we will do is prove that the algorithm is in fact correct and finds the minimum spanning tree.